One of the Pokemon TCG's most iconic retro formats is the 1999 standard format. This format featured only the game's first three sets, Base Set, Jungle, and Fossil. With players still learning the then new TCG 1999, many cards had their strength misevaluated, not used as much as they should have been, or had unique niches that were just overlooked. So today, we're going to be looking at the cards from the base through fossil format that were historically underrated or have small niches that players just didn't catch on to. And starting off at number 10, we have Moltres. For one fire energy, Wildfire lets you discard any number of fire energies from this card. And if you did, your opponent discarded that many cards from the top of their deck. For four fire energy, Dive Bomb dealt 80 damage if you want a coin flip. Since Dive Bomb's damage was only going to happen half the time you used it, this card only ever used Wildfire in a competitive setting. Just like Golduck, Moltres only really works in one specific archetype, that being the most hardcore of stall decks. In the Pokemon TCG, if a player starts their turn with no cards in their deck, they lose the game. With the very slow pace of base fossil games, Wildfire could be the difference maker between an opponent running out of cards in their deck before you do. A single Moltres repeating the attack with only a single energy attached greatly sped up the amount of times it took for stall decks to win by deck out. Especially if your opponent was drawing too many excess cards with Professor Oak or Bill. Back in 1999, Moltres was a build-around card in various stall strategies. One popular variant used Mewtwo and some combination of Clefairy Doll and Mysterious Fossil. These three cards could all deny your opponent damage in some way, with Barrier preventing any damage dealt and the two trainer cards by buying a turn against one attack since they gave up no prize cards when defeated. The problem with these hardcore stall strategies was that the aforementioned three cards were not good in a vacuum. Mewtwo could theoretically be impossible to KO if it's your only Pokemon in play, but is vulnerable to super energy removal and would eventually run out of energy cards. Clefairy, Dawn, Mysterious Fossil were also just bad cards, with many other more effective ways to stall for time being in the format. Stall decks of the time were also too passive against skilled players, and fell off as players got better. Moltres wasn't a particularly standout card in 1999 since its main deck wasn't very good. With the revisiting of the base fossil format, players applied modern deck building skills to the old format. As a result, people recognized Lickitung decks as one of the best strategies in the format. Lickitung gave Stallbecks the ability to proactively apply damage and take prize cards with a buildup of damage, eliminating the one issue with old stall variants. This format shift changed Moltres' role from the face of its own archetype to being a Pokemon that closes out games in certain stall variants. Stall decks ended up being much stronger when not using Wildfire every turn, and instead having it as a tool for a control mirror match. Moltres is low on this list since it was actually overvalued as its own dedicated archetype, but undervalued in its better role. And at number 9, we have Pinsir. This basic grass type has 60 HP and 2 attacks. For 2 grass energy, Iron Grip deals 20 damage and paralyzes the defending Pokemon if you flip ahead on a coin toss. Paralysis is one of the best status conditions in the Pokemon TCG, as it prevents the Pokemon from retreating or attacking for a turn. For 2 grass and 2 colorless energy, Guillotine deals a flat 50 damage. Guillotine is a decent attack to have if you find yourself short on other good Pokemon to attach energy to, or have the time to set it up. Where Pinsir gets its small niche is from Iron Grip, though. Pinsir exists as an option in various decks looking to deal chip damage while denying opposing attacks with Paralysis. Of the various archetypes playable in base to fossil format, this card best fits into Venusaur strategies. Venusaur's Energy Trans Poke Power allows you to move grass energies around your Pokemon as much as you want, and this Pokemon can use Solar Beam for 4 grass energy that deals 60 damage. Energy Trans decks were powerful and versatile once set up, but needed to buy time in order to get lots of energies onto the board and the Stage 2 Venusaur in play. In this deck, Pinsir can deal slight damage to opposing Pokemon while buying time for energy attachments and evolutions with Iron Grip's Paralysis. In the late game, once you get Venusaurs in play, Energy Trans can move all of the grass energy onto one potent attacker. Getting an extra 20 damage on an opposing Pokemon was especially valuable for Venusaur, as it sets up a two-hit KO against many popular cards like the Electabuzz and Mewtwo. Make no mistake though, Pinsir is an extremely niche card, and is even rarely used in its best archetype. Venusaur decks generally prefer Kangaskhan in the early game rather than Grass-type attackers. With a high 90 HP, this Pokemon can absorb multiple attacks from aggressive basic Pokemon, and its Psychic-type resistance allows it to defensively counter Mewtwo. While taking lots of attacks, you can use Collect for one colorless energy to draw a card, slowly accumulating resources in hand. 
Kangaskhan is simply a much safer inclusion in Venusaur decks. But if Venusaur found themselves in a tournament they knew would be filled with 70 or more HP Pokemon, Pinsir could fill a legitimate niche. And at number 8 we have Rattata. For one colorless energy, Bite deals 20 damage. With a measly 30 HP and one attack that only deals damage, this card appears almost useless. Despite that, Rattata possesses an extremely unique niche in the base to fossil format. Thanks to its very low HP, almost matching its damage output, this Pokemon is one of the most reliable ways to counter an opposing Ditto. While in the active spot, Ditto's transform Poke Power turns it into a copy of whatever your opponent's active Pokemon is, having all of its attacks and treating all attack costs as requiring no specific type of energy. Ditto was very popular in Haymaker decks using powerful basic Pokemon to apply offensive pressure. Any player finding Ditto particularly annoying, using those psychic type Pokemon weaker to their own archetypes such as Mewtwo, could turn to Rattata to get an easy KO. When in the active spot, Rattata made Ditto's HP 30, allowing for an easy KO with Bite and a single plus power. And even with only 30 HP, Rattata also had some minor defensive utility. With a Psychic type resistance, this Pokemon could actually survive nearly any attack from Psychic type Pokemon. Mewtwo Cyburn took three turns to KO, while other Psychics like Mr. Mime and Mew couldn't damage the card at all. Rattata was still vulnerable to the other Pokemon commonly played with these cards like Scyther or Lickitung, so if all you wanted was a Psychic type resistance, different cards like Chansey or the aforementioned Lickitung were preferred. But those cards couldn't easily handle Ditto, giving Rattata a unique niche that was historically undervalued. And at number 7 we have Electabuzz, one of the few promotional cards allowed in the base to fossil format. This Electrotype Pokemon has 60 HP and 2 attacks. For one electric energy, Light Screen halves all damage dealt to this Pokemon during your opponent's next turn. With attacks in the base to fossil format often dealing only 20 damage, Light Screen reducing only 10 damage made it a very weak attack. Also for two colorless energy, Quick Attack deals 10 damage plus 20 more if you want a coin flip. In most metrics, this promo Electabuzz is actually worse than the original base set Electabuzz. For one energy, base set Electabuzz deals good chip damage with a chance at paralysis while its second attack can deal upwards of 40 damage for only 2 energy, being the only basic Pokemon capable of doing so during this format. With inferior attacks and less HP, what makes Promo Electabuzz an underrated card? The answer is Quick Attack's energy cost. This makes the card unique in being the only electric type Pokemon legal in base to fossil format that can deal more than 10 damage without requiring any electric energy. With just a double colorless energy attached, you can potentially deal 30 damage with an electric type Pokemon. This format has many good electric weak Pokemon such as Blastoise and Dodrio, and some strategies value having an easily splashable electric type Pokemon. Realistically, any deck using double colorless energy could facilitate Electabuzz, but the best home for the card would be any colorless strategy already playing a non-electric, non-colorless type. In order to complement a Pokemon like Clefable or Ligatong's fighting type weakness, these decks would often play a suite of psychic types to dissuade using Pokemon like Hitmonchan. If you wanted to play the base at Electabuzz to hit electric type weaknesses, you'd have to lower the deck's consistency by playing an additional type of basic energy. With promo Electabuzz, you wouldn't have to compromise consistency for extra attack options. Although it seems to be worse than its base set counterpart, Electabuzz fills a role no other card can. And at number 6 we have Golduck. Unlike other Pokemon on this list so far, this card doesn't represent an undervalued niche, but instead a whole archetype that was historically underexplored. For one Psychic Energy, Psyshock deals 10 damage and paralyzes the defending Pokemon if you win a coin flip. For two Water and one Colorless Energy, Hyper Beam dealt 20 damage and discarded an energy card from the defending Pokemon. It's the second attack that's the main focus behind this card. Golduck's strategies want to run the opposing player out of energy cards by repeatedly discarding energy cards with Hyper Beam and a full 4 copies each of energy removal and super energy removal. The former discarded 1 energy from any of your opponent's Pokemon in play, while the latter discarded 2 energies from any one Pokemon in play, at the cost of discarding 1 energy from one of your own Pokemon. Eventually, constant energy discard would leave your opponent unable to stop Hyper Beam's damage from piling up, winning the game. Historically, there were a few factors holding this strategy back. One large detractor against this deck was the prevalence of Electabuzz, which could easily KO Golduck and its pre-evolution Psyduck. Energy Denial wasn't very relevant against Electabuzz and other low-cost attackers because they only needed one energy card to slowly chip away at your Pokemon. Like Golduck strategies, Haymaker decks use energy removal and super energy removal to prevent opponents from overwhelming their early aggression. Super energy removal was devastating against Golduck, 
because Hyper Beam required three energies to use and was slow to set up. While Psyduck's Headache could buy time to get energy attached with no threat of energy removal from trainers, this didn't work against Haymaker because too much uncontested damage was being dealt in the meantime. In the modern metagame of the base to fossil format, Haymaker decks are much less common. So preventing super energy removal with Headache over multiple turns while attaching energy is more reasonable. Control decks are actually much better in the modern metagame than they were back in 1999, due to innovations and strategy from players revisiting older formats in the TCG. Nowadays, what really helps keep the strategy a rogue option rather than an established meta threat is competition with the other, more established control decks like Lickitung variants. Even though it's not top tier, Gold Duck is much better than players originally made it out to be. And at number 5, we have yet another unassuming basic Pokemon in Ghastly. For one Psychic Energy, Lick deals 10 damage and paralyzes the defending Pokemon if you win a coin flip. For 2 Psychic Energy, Energy Conversion lets you put any 2 energy cards from your discard pile into your hand, but deals 10 damage to itself. Many different Pokemon around this time had attacks identical to Lick. We've mentioned 4 of them already, so what distinguishes Ghastly? The answer is its resistance. While a Psychic type resistance is the most valuable in the base to fossil format, many decks also benefit greatly from having a fighting type resistance. Powerful colorless Pokemon like Lickitung defensively countered powerful Psychic type Pokemon but their fighting type weakness left them vulnerable to Hitmonchan. Ghastly stopped any fighting Pokemon in its tracks, and could deal significant damage over a few turns as many of the best fighting type Pokemon have a psychic weakness. Fighting weak Pokemon in the base to fossil format are almost always paired up with fighting resistant Pokemon for this reason. Make no mistake though, Ghastly isn't the best fighting resistant Pokemon. That would generally be Scyther with its higher HP and damage output but there are some advantages to Ghastly. First, Lick's cost is far more reasonable than Slash's, not requiring a double colorless energy to be effective. Lick to hit KO Mr. Mime and its paralysis could stall other opposing Pokemon for a few turns. Secondly, Ghastly had no weaknesses, something very unique for the time. In a format where many strategies opt to partner Hitmonchan with Magmar specifically to deal super effective damage to Scyther, having an alternate fighting resistance Pokemon could prove highly valuable. Lastly, Energy Conversion was a very unique attack for the time. Outside of Energy Retrieval or Mewtwo's Psychic Absorption, there were few ways to recover discarded energy, and zero ways to get back any discarded double colorless energy. Over the course of a long game against a deck heavy on energy denial cards, energy conservation could be the difference maker that allows you to maintain a steady flow of attackers. Because Ghastly has such unique utility and fills different roles in Scyther, the two are frequently played in the same strategies something you wouldn't assume just by looking at the two cards. And at number 4, we have Gambler, the only trainer card on this list. When you play this card, you shuffle your hand into your deck, then flip a coin. If heads, you draw 8 cards. If tails, you draw 1 card. Compared to the many overpowered trainer cards that were staples of the early metagame, playing a card with the potential downside of leaving only a single card in your hand seems ridiculous. Ironically, it's actually that downside which gives Gambler its competitive niche. When playing against a stall deck, the most important thing to keep track of is how many cards are in your deck. This card is one of the only options in the base to fossil format which can put cards from anywhere back into the deck if you're running out of cards. Playing against stall, the best thing to do is to play as few cards as reasonable to advance your win condition. If a game goes very late, players can even have 15 plus cards in their hand but a very low deck size. In that case, Gambler can be played to refill the amount of cards in your deck and prevent a deck out lose condition. If that's the goal, then you'd actually want to flip tails on the effect to only draw a single card. There were some players that used Gambler this way back in 1999, but its usage isn't anywhere near what it is now in modern base to fossil events. And at number 3, we have Psyduck. For one Psychic Energy, Headache prevents your opponent from playing any trainer cards during their next turn. Fury Swipes is an attack reliant on coin flips to deal damage and is not particularly relevant for why this card is on this list. During a time before supporter cards and trainer cards had a distinction, Headache prevented your opponent from doing anything. Despite how strong the lock effect is, Psyduck saw very little play when the base to fossil format was played in 1999. The metagame revolved around Haymaker, which wasn't favorable for the card. When players revisited the format decades after it was first played, people realized Haymaker decks were overrated. As mentioned when talking about its evolution, Psyduck had benefited greatly from metagame shifts in the base to fossil format due to the lesser presence of Pokemon which can threaten it. 
As a result, decks looking to slow an opponent's setup or interaction with Headache are much better than initially thought. Psyduck is mainly used to prevent your opponent from playing energy removal and super energy removal. With these two cards unusable under constant headaches, it gives decks with very high energy costs time to actually set up. Once these decks are ready to attack with their win conditions, playing last shuffles all the energy disruption cards they could have previously had back into the deck. Cards like Arcanine or Zapdos, powered up by Electrode's Buzz Zap, could end games very quickly with their high damage output, but were extremely weak against super energy removal. Psyduck also has a role in the base to fossil format's many stall variants. In a stall mirror match, late game headaches preventing key trainer cards from being played are a massive headache for your opponent. When paired with Moltres, another good card into stall mirror matches, headache can prevent your opponent from responding to energy slowly accumulating for the wildfire attack. When there's enough energy on Moltres to completely deck out your opponent, Psyduck can be retreated and the game won by deck out. This card represents yet another underrated evolving basic Pokemon filling a role no other card could. And taking the second place spot, we have Dodrio. This stage 1 Pokemon has an excellent Poke Power and a good attack. The Retreat Aid Poke Power reduces your Pokemon's retreat cost by 1 colorless energy. For 3 colorless energy, Rage deals 10 damage, plus 10 more for each damage counter on this Pokemon. Back in 1999, this card saw very little play despite its many positive traits, likely due to the prevalence of Electabuzz dissuading players from trying any card with an Electric-type weakness. Dodrio is one of the strongest and most flexible evolution Pokemon in the base to fossil format thanks to its Pokemon power. At the time, there weren't other ways to decrease a Pokemon's retreat cost or circumvent it unless you played Switch or Scoop Up, cards with one-time effects. Having a single Dodrio in play allowed you to maintain extra energy cards on the board compared to your opponent because you wouldn't discard as many for your own retreat costs. We've talked about how Pokemon with good resistances were able to completely wall any damage, forcing their opponent to switch their attacker for a different bench Pokemon. With how frequently decks have Pokemon meant to stop all offensive progress thanks to their resistances, Dodrio granting an easy way to move your Pokemon in and out of the active spot was extremely important for some decks. If you weren't trying to avoid a Pokemon's problematic resistance, being able to easily retreat a heavily damaged Pokemon like Hitmonchan or Wigglytuff to promote an unharmed, harder to KO attacker easily put opponents on the back foot, since taking that easier KO meant they had to play Gust of Wind and force them to ignore your new threat for a turn. If an opponent wanted to prevent Dodrio from getting set up, they had to be very cautious due to the power of Rage. With a double colorless energy, it was easy to turn any damaged Doduo into a card that two-hit KO'd all Pokemon in the format with Rage dealing 40 damage. If you somehow got 60 damage on Dodrio without it getting knocked out, then Rage would take out any of the prevalent Haymaker Pokemon. This versatility allows this card to be played in a wide variety of strategies, from Wigglytuff, Venusaur, and even some Haymaker variants. Dodrio went from being a rarely played card back in 1999 to a competitive staple in present day based to fossil events. And finishing off at number one, we have the best Pokemon card in the base to fossil format, Lickitung. This basic Pokemon has a staggering 90 HP and one relevant attack. For one colorless energy, and stop me if you heard this before, Lick deals 10 damage and paralyzes defending Pokemon if you win a coin flip. This exact attack has been brought up multiple times now, and this card is the perfect user for it. Thanks to its extremely high HP, Lickitung has more opportunities to get paralysis on opposing Pokemon than any other card because it takes much longer to KO. With both Constant Paralysis, the second highest base HP of any basic Pokemon, and a stellar Psychic-type resistance, this card is able to deal significant damage over the course of a long game, while being an extremely difficult Pokemon to KO. It also couldn't be reliably disrupted by energy removal cards due to the attack's one energy cost. Mewtwo, one of the best means to deal with high HP Pokemon, will never threaten a Lickitung. Magmar, Electabuzz, and Scyther can try and threaten it with their attacks, but the one-on-one -on -one matchup can easily be turned around by multiple paralysis applications from Lick. Even some of the highest damage output Pokemon like Wigglytuff aren't always reliable offensive counters thanks to energy removal and super energy removal denying energy cards. The only commonly played card with a good matchup into Lickitung is Hitmonchan, as the card hits the former for its weakness for only a single energy card. The difficulty of effectively knocking out Lickitung while it slowly racks up damage counters on your opponent's Pokemon makes it one of, if not the best, individual cards in the base to fossil format. The discovery of this card's strength as people revisited the format long after 1999 shifted the modern metagame in such a way 
that it's almost unrecognizable from its historic counterpart. In 1999, the deck to beat was the aggressive Haymaker deck using the best and most damaging basic Pokemon. Nowadays, the format revolves around Lickitung stall variants. Not only is this card strong individually, but it also synergizes excellently with other fantastic cards. Since Lick has a colorless energy cost, you can play whatever basic energy cards and Pokemon best fit the metagame. Generally speaking, this means using lots of Psychic-type Pokemon like Mewtwo, Mr. Mime, and the honorary Psychic Pokemon Psyduck to attack Hitmonchan's weakness and for their excellent utility. These Psychic Ligatung decks can also utilize Scyther with double colorless energy to blank any Hitmonchan's defensively while dealing more consistent damage output with Slash. Even if you do get close to knocking out Ligatung, the deck can use either Scoop Up to put it right back into the hand, or Pokemon Center to restore all damage, denying your opponent the prize card either way, and having wasted the time that damage had been accumulating for. There's an incredible depth to Lickitung Scyther's Psychic decks, and even though a common framework for the archetype is established, the deck has lots of room for customization. The deck also has one of the most skill-based mirror matches in the Pokemon TCG's history. If you asked a player in 1999 what Pokemon card defines the format, they'd probably say Hitmonchan or Electabuzz. If you ask a modern base to fossil format player that question, they'll say Lickitung. And we hope you enjoyed this look at the top 10 underrated cards from the game's most iconic retro format. If there's any cards you think deserve to be on this list, let us know down in the comments below.